This is part two of a series on shorebird topography, in which we'll be looking at the underparts and the legs. In part one, we looked at the head, and if you missed that video, there'll be a link below this one that you can click on. Looking at the rest of the bird, essentially the body, there's an obvious dividing line between the brown at the top and the white at the bottom that's formed by the edge of the wing. So everything above that edge we'll call the upper parts and everything below it, the underparts. After we've looked at the underparts, we'll also look at the legs. So the underparts, the first area below the head is the breast. It's often differently colored or patterned from the areas above and below it. So we might talk about a bird like this one, the Malaysian plover, as having a breast band. A breast band can be complete or it can be broken in the middle and in the center, in which case we might prefer to describe the marks at the side of the breast as lateral breast patches. Below the breast is the belly. It's often in shade if, we're, if, if there's bright sunlight. It's often white, but it can also be patterned or colored. Above the belly are these fluffy feathers called, or this area is known as the flanks. These are quite long feathers and they can either be tucked beneath the folded wing, in which case it can be hard to see if there are any markings on them, or they can fluff out as in this photograph so that they cover the folded wing, in which case there are parts of the wing that we cannot see. So when you're looking at a bird and trying to describe it, it's quite important to figure out whether you're looking at the flank feathers over the wing or whether the flank feathers are tucked out of sight under the wing. Behind the belly and the flanks is the area known as the vent. This extends underneath the tail and includes the undertail coverts. So that's the underparts. And before I show you the legs, or rather before I show you the names of the different parts of the leg, it's quite useful to understand what we are seeing when we look at a shorebird's leg. First of all, the, the femur, the upper leg, is actually inside the bird's body, as is the knee joint. If I, if I can just show you here, this is the knee joint here, and as you can see, it's hidden inside the bird's body. So the top part of the leg that we can see is actually the equivalent of our calf or shin. That means that the joint below that, which bends the leg forward, is actually the ankle and the heel of the foot. And then the lower part of the leg is actually equivalent to our foot with the toes at the end. Now let's get to what we call each part. The upper part that we can see is the tibia and the lower part is commonly known as the tarsus. And then the joint between them is the tibiotarsal joint. Estimating leg length is often an important aspect of identification. However, there's a need for some caution because obviously the length, the visible length of the tibia can vary depending on how fluffed out or compressed the belly feathers are. So in hot temperatures, birds may compress their belly feathers, which makes the tibia and the whole leg look longer than usual. And conversely, in cold weather, a bird may fluff out its belly feathers, which make the legs look shorter than usual. The tarsus is a more constant length, but even so, it can be hard to find something else of constant length to compare it to. Most shorebirds have at least, well, have four toes, three of which point forwards. And, but on the other hand, um, plovers, the family of plovers, generally don't have the fourth hind toe, the one which extends back from the back of the foot. The exception being gray plover, which does have a vestigial hind toe. Uh, many other shorebirds do have the hind toe, and uh, in many cases, the toes are unwebbed, 
but in some cases there is a partial webbing with skin joining the base of the toes and this is known as semi-palmations and a bird with semi-palmations you can call that the, the foot is semi-palmated. Some species like avocets have fully webbed toes so their foot is fully palmated and phalaropes have uh, curiously lobed toes in which the flanges on both sides of the toe uh, help it to swim in the sea and in, 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 in water. So in this video we've covered the underparts and the legs and in the next one we'll be looking at the upper parts.